Hello Strasbourg and others watching this Daily Devotion today. It is Wednesday, August 5th, 2020. I'm going to share with you some words from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word with faith we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is gener generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet! of those who bring good news. Paul is addressing many things, I think, here in this scripture. I think where he talks at the very beginning where he says, do not bring Christ down or to bring Christ up from the dead, I think he's talking about how we are so easy to pass judgment on others when we say, well, who's going to go to heaven? Who's going to go to hell? Uh, instead, what Paul is saying is to don't focus on that. Focus on the fact that God has given you an opportunity to believe, and that if you believe in your heart and if you believe in your mind, then you will be saved. And he goes even further to say that neither Jew nor Greek, the Lord is the same of everybody. And so anybody who calls on the name of the Lord is blessed. And then he continues by saying, but how can you believe without hearing and how can you hear without having somebody tell you? And, and I think that is the heart of this message today, that we need to be able to tell the story of faith and belief to others. And that some of us are called to do that. I'd say all of us are called to do that, but some of us feel com more comfortable than others doing that. Faith and belief is a gift from God, but it is something that we can live out in our life, um, both in, in uh, how we believe in our hearts, but also um, how it fits in with the rest of our life. John Wesley challenged his believers uh, in the 1700s uh, as he talked about um, the Methodist form of, of church. He said, you need to have a holiness of heart and life that we tend to the inner spirit, we tend to those things that, that keep us in love with God, but we also need to practice our loving of neighbor. Um, and, I, and that's kind of, kind of be a hard lesson for some people because uh, you know, it seems to be very simple here that, that Paul says, well, as long as you confess with your heart and, and as you confess with your mouth that you believe in God, that you will be saved. Well, it's not as simple as that because I think confessing with your heart and saying it with your with your words out of your mouth also assumes an action and a change in your life also. So my encouragement to you today is to um, continue to believe, but practice that belief in your everyday. I wanted to uh, share with you um, just some words. Uh, this is written by Isaac uh, Viegas. Uh, he is a pastor of Chapel Hill Mennonite Fellowship in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Now, I, I'm saying his name using um, the double L's that, that I learned in New Mexico, Viegas, but I'm, it may be V-I-L-L-E-A-G-A-S, it may be Villegas. Who knows how he pronounces it? 
but he's a pastor there in North Carolina, and he writes about being in a Sunday school class teaching a group of seven-year-olds. Once, after I read to the seven-year-olds in my class the story about Moses and the burning bush, I lit a candle and asked them to listen to the flame. They squinted their eyes and tilted their ears toward the burning wick. I asked them what they thought God's voice sounded like. God's voice crackled, one child said. God's words made a hissing noise like when I whisper, said another. I think God sounded like me, said another child, which provoked a shouting match as each kid claimed God's tone as an echo of their own voice. Now, I thought I should be a responsible teacher and get control of this class, but I couldn't help but laugh at my failure. Then a child who had sat in silence during the ruckus spoke up. No, she announced. We all turned our attention to her. God sounds like all of our voices because we learn about God from each other. I glanced around the room. We all seemed to be in agreement, so I dismissed the class. With these kids in this Sunday school class, as I grasp at the words of our faith that doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense for them, you know, this burning bush, I learned to listen to the Spirit who has gathered us to learn God's mysteries together and in a new way. How is God revealing meaning to you through scripture, through this pandemic, through your interactions with others, maybe even through this time of reflection every day? How is God helping you make sense of this world and your faith? I might encourage you to have the wisdom that Isaac Villegas has of being able to listen to children and hear something anew as we listen to the scriptures that we have heard so much in our lives. I'm going to share with you a, a song that is uh, about the Holy Spirit, and it's called Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of the Go in peace and have a wonderful day today. Amen.